new scheme. I like it. This is the turbo drain. So it actually sucks from the turbos down into the pump. All right, making some serious progress on the Ultimaniac. Dylan's firing us off with some, uh, hey, uh, a custom bulkhead, a super low profile bulkhead. Gonna be pretty sick. And then we got that shifter dialed in. I started modifying one of my old handbrake brackets. I got the handbrake to the tunnel. Had a couple of these laying around. And so I took one and I modified it. I cut just the handbrake part of it off. And you know, it's got the cool little window in there for less weight, but still strong. Got it drilled out and snugged up on my handbrake. And we're gonna toss it right in there once, once Dylan's all done out the way. Just lay right here on top of his car for now. And then I'm gonna put the shifter back together. So I'm gonna grab this guy. Like we did in the uh, earlier, notching out this shifter so we can run it backwards, shortening the lever so it will fit. And we even had to notch the transmission a little bit for it to clear. You see that, Dylan? What's that? Bring in this guy. Oh, I didn't see that. A little, little belty boy came in. That's like a machine finish. Looks great. <laughs> Can't even tell. Yeah. And so this guy, this is literally gonna ride like right in here. It's super tight. It just barely clears. Wow. So we have the whole thing flipped around inside out, upside down. So I'm gonna put this guy back together. All right. This was not exactly easy. Jimmy, is this length set at all? this same size panel and then this is like a bigger center section. Yeah, I think uh, it's like, <laughs> yeah, I think like this angle or this shape. Right, mirror it. Will get better. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that now I'm looking at it. Cause after I set it up, I was like, uh, uh, I no, I mean, that's all squared off of this line. How I, came up with how to do that. It was pretty interesting. Yeah. Eddie Van Halen car. <laughs> That's the new scheme, cool. I like it. I'm into the new livery. Mm -hmm. So, and a little tape boy putting up, cause I needed something, yeah. something oh. straight to make us lay a square across them. <laughs> so I like used the, wind, the two little buttons in the windshield. No, oh, that's cool. And then leveled that. It's pretty slick. Let's see, this is what Jimmy's been working on. So he's got all these little tabs in here that hold that plate in. And these like slide in all nice like. And then what that does is that fills this whole gap uh, because we have this big gap, right? I'm gonna fill it in. We kind of got this idea from the NASCAR. Because a NASCAR has a very similar looking thing, right? So we're gonna do this little mesh. We built this panel into a NASCAR. It used to be solid. We wanted to let some heat out because it's the, you know, not doing super speedways anymore. So we're kind of using that theory onto this. So it's got these little mount tabs and everything holding it all up. This lower windshield cow used to be way down here. Windshield used to come all the way down to here and just be dropped down. You know, and it has that little tray for the wipers. But that's all gone. So we came, brought it down to here, moved this all up for better access to the engine. The engine's so far back. And then now this is nice and flat and level and he built a panel to fill in this gap. So it looks really, really slick. And also on top of that, the exhaust comes right out here. That's what those big loops were out here. So the exhaust dumps right out this panel. It's gonna be pretty freaking slick. Uh, a lot of cool little things. This very is like, cool. it is very cool. This is a pretty cool idea that we had a long, long time ago. And it's crazy to see it actually coming together. So here's the exhaust cut out. Now it's all about tracing in the vents, putting some cool trapezoidal pieces into place to give it the look 
that we want. So these are three different panels. So this one fills this whole gap into here. And then like we we're saying, we're gonna mirror this onto this piece just so it's that one gigantic hole to give it some support. So boom, boom, boom. And then big middle trapezoid. Jimmy doing his super fine detailed work to get it all nice and even level and square. In place, flip X. In place, flip, copy, paste. We just got a little pile of XRP fittings that uh, we're gonna be using to hook up our dry sump and also our new radiator from CNR. So I'm just gonna open up some of these guys. We got a couple of these union adapters, uh, which are gonna be for the strap sump tank. We also have uh, these bigger adapters, which are for the radiator, uh, and then a bunch of these fittings. Just gonna start running through and putting things where they should go so I have a better idea if uh, I got everything or not because I always need more fittings. So we're gonna start with the dry sump tank. Now this is going to be the feed. It's the drain, it's the very bottom of the tank actually. So this guy, it goes on there. Then we have to add a weld fitting right to here. All these guys too. What's that? Cool. So it's always best to use a little bit of oil when you're using these O-rings, these O-ring fittings. So what I do is pour a little on the cap, a little Q-tip. Just put it on there. Prevents the O-ring from getting torn. And these do not need a lot of force. Yeah, I'm put a little X on that label there because that's just how I determine which bottle I'm using for the fittings and or things like that. So I don't end up pouring that into an engine. Here are more fittings. These fittings are killer, they're like the crush style. So you just put the hose over and crush the collar on there, not the screw on type. And also the little turn down nut just gives a little extra racy look. Actually, I'm just gonna take that thing out. It's a little awkward to get to. Something like that. I actually want to flip these ins and outs how they are. That's all in there. them all right through so it'll give you a nice radius edge on each one. All these pieces. So it's gonna be sweet. Yeah now that I have all this placed and the manifolds are now made. I don't really like how close this is, so I'm gonna get a different fitting for here that just 90 straight off. I'll bring this line a lot tighter. It'll be over here versus over here. I know it doesn't seem like much, but any amount of distance you can get off of that manifold, it's gonna make a big difference. So I'm gonna write that part number down and get that replaced. 
All right, so next we have to take off the dry sump pump because I gotta put a fitting in the side of the thing. So might as well just do it now. Um, so I gotta make sure it clears. So for this, we're gonna try some pump from Daily Engineering. It's got multiple stages. It's even got this, so it pulls three from the pan, pulls this one is up from the front of the uh, pump, goes back to the tank, it's the main feed. This is the turbo drain. So it actually sucks from the turbos down into the pump. And then this is the little aerator block, which helps get all the foam and little air bubbles out of the uh, return line. So this will run up to the top of the tank as uh, well as this one. And so they'll go in separately and it's just something that helps with getting that oil to mix perfectly. So let's wipe this thing off a little bit. Jimmy finished up this panel last night. It looks super sick. It is nice and windowed out for all the heat to come out of there nice and easy and just keep this engine bay running nice and cool. Still gonna put some vents in here, especially for uh, getting some air to those turbos. But, um, so we'll have some cups out here to feed those turbos and then the exhaust dumps right here, whoosh, big exhaust and then a the little one for the wastegate. You know, so this is being a three panel setup, kind of windowed this out to match what is going on there as far as the, the panel brake and the exhaust, and then just mirrored it right to here, you know, laid over. And the centerpiece with these little pieces being up like that, it really takes a similar look to the actual grill line in the Ultima front end. So really cool how that kind of ties it all together. But yeah, just a super stellar piece. And yeah, when you look at it from the side, this windshield line, which used to be, like I said, way down here, you know, this windshield used to cut all the way down into this part and make room for the wipers and everything else. But now it actually like extends that hood line for another eight inches or so and uh, shortens up the windshield. So when you look at the car from the front, it's going to have a pretty unique look. And it's one of those little things that will be hard to kind of point out and see it uh, with the naked eye without actually knowing what happens. So we're having a stock one sitting right next to it. But yeah, from the front, you know, just kind of lays in nice and smooth. But yeah, basically just extending that hood line, having room for that engine back here, more serviceability, you know, being able to pop this panel off, get into all of our dry sump stuff. Just really, really well thought out on how this whole thing is coming together, um, especially from you know, the designer standpoint. And also Jimmy, of course, you know, going in and making sure that we have not only uh, everything in the car, but accessibility to everything in the car. So really looking forward to it. We're gonna get this thing kind of cleaned up, clean up some of these tabs, get the mesh on the bottom side. So it's not just a big hole right through it and get all painted up and it's gonna match up real nice. So I just heard the good news. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's good news, but it is news. Oh my God. <laughs> That's what you used to hold your main cap on your rod. Hey, he's still doing a good job. This guy is probably the wrist pin of a piston, maybe? Uh, no, this is my keychain. I was wondering where that ah, went. Ah, there yeah, it is. Yeah. 